All right, we are back, and today we're looking at Age of Overlord. We're going to do a an overview look at this set, just the high points of the set. But this is the set that kind of got lost in the sauce. This is uh, a lot of people put money into Duelist Nexus. A lot of people have moved money into the Rarity Collection. A lot of money was spent on those tins. And this set's just kind of sitting in the middle there. And a lot of people have missed out on this set. It's a very good set. We're going to break it down and show you why it's a good set. Um, so that's what we're going to do today. My name is Todd from Go2 Cards. If you're not subscribed to the channel, hit that subscribe button. We would love for you to be part of the community. Also, hit that like button. It does help us out tremendously and it would be much appreciated. All right, we do have the winners for the giveaway that I'm going to go over as quickly as possible. Instead of two winners, we added a third winner. So there's going to be three winners. Each person's getting a quarter century rare, the one that they said they wanted. So the first winner is Cyber Dueler 21. You got the Dark Magician. There you go. All right, the second winner, I have no idea how to say this, but I see your name all the time. I'm going to just spell it for you. It's all capitalized. P L S H A H A. That is the winner of the Cyber Dragon. You got the Cyber Dragon, man. Good pick. I love that card. All right. And the third winner that we just threw in here for fun is Daddy Bear with two R's at the end. You got the Neos. Those are the three winners. All you got to do is send me uh, an email to Co2Cards, all one word, to Co2Cards10 at gmail.com that 10 is the number 10 not t-e-n so co2 cards the number 10 at gmail.com as well as a screenshot of your youtube channel just so that i know that it's you all right let's jump into age of overlord uh you all know by now for me a set to be a really good set it's got to have a three of spell or trap that is uh, or has the potential to be a meta staple. This set does not have that. But this set does have some other things that I absolutely love about it. And because of that, I'm willing to overlook it not having a meta three of spell or trap. So let's jump into this. There's a couple parts of every set. The first part that I want to look at briefly is the support to existing archetypes. You always have support to existing archetypes. In Dolus Nexus, you had that support to Unchain that really just took Unchain from here and moved it up to there. This set doesn't have anything like that. The strength of this set is not in existing uh, or support to existing archetypes. And so some of the archetypes, I'm not going to talk about it all. I'm not going to talk about the Supreme King or the Earthbound or Fire Support or Nemorilia or Watt or Hungry Burger or TG or Ogdotic. I'm not going to talk about any of those. It has support for all those decks. I don't think that that support does enough to warrant really talking about. But there are a couple decks that are going to benefit pretty good from this set and they are all pretty meta relevant or kind of at least rogue decks so let's look at them the first is manadium you're going to get support uh for manadium or just visus in general uh you're going to get i think there's three cards in here for mana diem uh one is an extra deck monster that is probably the best thing in here you also got a a, a, a monster for your regular deck i think there might be a spell or trap in here as well but it's that extra deck monster that really has people excited so keep that in mind uh labyrinth is getting a new card that's supposed to be pretty good so Labyrinth players, 
keep that in mind. You've got a new card coming out in Age of Overlord that looks to be pretty good. Uh, the Chimera Illusion archetype. You got a new Chimera Fusion in here that uh, looks pretty good. Looks like that might help out the deck a little bit. So if you play the Illusion Chimera deck with Branded or maybe just run it by itself, I don't know. Um, but th that might be something that you'd be pretty excited about. And then the last one that I really wanted to talk about is Vanquish Soul. I think you're getting two cards in here. One's a spell and the other is a monster, which may help the Vanquish Soul players out there who spent a lot of money on that deck and it hasn't really materialized. Maybe this can get them over the hump on that. So that's the that's the support for existing archetypes. And as I said already, that's not where this set really thrives and is good. But the, the, the support might be something that you're interested in. So it's something to keep in mind. Um, the next kind of set or um, set of cards that I want to look at is new archetypes. And, uh, and I think the new archetypes are exciting. Uh, I think this is a place that is really going to drive this set, is the new archetypes. Um, now, there's three of them. And we're going to start off with the worst one, which is the Snake Eyes. It's also the one that I'm really, really interested in because I love kind of the play style of the Snake Eyes. I love the idea of putting... Um, your opponent's monsters in their spell and trap zone. I love that. Uh, we did get the first Snake Eyes card in Dolus Nexus, and now we're getting the 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 rest of the cards, I guess, or a, another wave of cards. But there's going to be a decent bit of them. I don't think that the Snake Eyes is really going to be a meta relevant deck. It might be like Tistina but a little bit better. But it might be very interesting. It might be a fun deck to play. By the way, I have not seen anything from the uh, Tistina in this set yet, but I don't think that we have all or maybe any of the uh, imports or the TCG exclusives in this set yet. So keep that in mind. There are some things that we do not have yet. Um, but uh, Snake Eyes, probably not, probably not the big uh, driving force behind this. But the next two. The next two are where it's at. Uh, first one is Dia Bellstar. This is a really good, um, probably more of an engine than a deck. Um, you're probably interested in running this in an existing deck that you already have as an engine, which could be a very good engine. I've heard people running it in uh, Eldleach or some other decks. Um, but th this is something you're going to want. These cards are going to be printed in high rarity. And this is a very good engine. This will see play in the meta in some regard. Do not think that this engine is just going to come out and go away. It won't. It will see play in the meta. You're going to want to get your hands on these cards. Uh, the Dia Bellstar. The next one though. This is the, for me, and I think for a lot of people, this is the big one, and that's Horus. And, and Horus also is probably more of an engine than a deck in and of itself. And so Horus will certainly see play. I think this is like a level eight engine that is very good, can easily see play in a variety of decks. So what you have here is you've got Snake Eyes, which is kind of a cool little deck. And then you have two other decks, but those two other decks function more like engines than decks in and of themselves. Now, if we're talking about two meta relevant engines, when is the last time you've seen something like that? The last time you've seen something like that was Grand Creators. And that was a deck building set. But that deck building set gave us two 
wonderful engines. First of all, it gave us the adventure package and then it gave us the punk package. And both of those were very playable, good engines. At first, nobody was playing punk, but all of a sudden punk started getting played and it was very, very good. Punk and the adventure package coming out of grand creators. This reminds me a little bit of that. You do not want to make the mistake I made with Grand Creators. When we bought Grand Creators, I think we bought, um, I don't know, at the time we bought a lot of it. Um, I think we ended up about five cases, which was a lot for us at that time. And when I looked at the adventure package, I looked at it and I thought, eh, I don't want this. I'm not going to mess with this. And I sold everything. And when I looked at the punk engine, I thought, eh, I'm not going to want this. And I sold everything. Do not do that. Do not look at these two engines and think they're not going to do anything. I don't need these. You're going to want these cards. You're going to want the Diaspel uh, engine as well as the Horus engine. These are very good. After I sold those, I find myself just like, why did I do that? Why didn't I keep just one of each? Um, same thing with these. These are going to be the driving force behind this because there's a lot of cards that make up these engines. Now, the last part of this. The last part of this is more like generic cards. And when you're talking about the generic cards, there's really two that are going to drive the generic cards. But I do want to talk about a couple others. The first one I want to talk about is the Dark Hole Dragon. You all have heard about this. You know about this. It's probably going to be printed in a high rarity. The card looks absolutely amazing. It's probably not going to be super great as far as playability. But you, you may want this card. This is a card that I certainly uh, want. I think a lot of people are going to want this card. It's not going to break the bank. It's probably going to be somewhere around 3 to $5. But it might take up a secret rare spot. I would not be surprised at all. Another card is the Angel Ring. People have been talking about this. I think it's played in Infernoble or really any deck that equips. This is another card that people are very much interested in that's in here. Another one is Exceed the Pendulum. Those that are, those Pendulum players out there, you just got beyond the Pendulum. Now you're getting Exceed the Pendulum. The, those two cards together pretty much guarantee we're not getting Electro, Electromite back. But these two cards do a lot for Pendulums, so you might have an interest in that as well. There is a trap that I have no idea how to say the first word of this. It's like Sessyon uh, Rutan. Uh, Sessyon, Sessiho Rutan, I have no idea. I'm from Pittsburgh. We don't speak proper English. Uh, we certainly can't pronounce words like this. Um, this might be an interesting card. Um, it might be something that, you, you know, if you if you play a trap deck, if you're playing Labyrinth or Trap Trick or something like that, you might be interested in this card. It is generic and, and can be run in a lot of different decks. But that brings me to the last two cards. And the last two cards are amazing. The, the second to last card and the card we want to look at right now is, T is Tifon. This is the new Zeus. You've heard about it. This card is amazing. You're going you're gonna to want this card. You are definitely going to want this card. This card's going to come out in probably a secret rare. It's probably going to be expensive. This is going to be a card that you certainly want to have. It's going to be, in my mind, an extra deck staple. And that is a wonderful thing. The last card that you that everybody knows about is SP Little Knight. This is probably the best IP target that you're going to have. This is a great, great card. You are definitely going to want to get it. It's definitely going to be in a high rarity. It's definitely going to be expensive. But this is going to be a card that you're going to want to get. Probably 
just like the last set you're going to get all the ultras and all the secrets printed in quarter century as well so you're going to be able to get all these cards in a higher rarity as well but what drives this set is two meta relevant engines that can be splashed into a lot of different decks as well as two extra deck staples and for me that's enough to make this a i'm not gonna say it's a great set but i'm gonna say that it's the best set of the year as far as core sets it's better than Cyberstorm Access. It's, it's better than um, Duelist Nexus. better than Photon Hypernova. As far as core sets, to me, this is the best set of the year, core set-wise, and a very, very good set. It's a shame where it came out because a lot of people have already spent a lot of money. They're not going to be able to afford this set, and it's, it's unfortunate. But this set has some great, great cards in there that you're going to want to get those engines those two extra deck staple cards are going to drive this set and in addition to that it also has some really good cards the labyrinth the manadiums the snake eyes cards if you're interested in that the dark hole dragon uh chimera fusion this is a good set this is if you've got some money you might consider holding on to some money and moving it into this set. I think it's a really good set. We're going to talk more about this set in detail as more details come out, the rarities and uh, the, the TCG imports and the exclusives and all that stuff. So we're going to break this set down a lot more, but that's your general overview of Age of Overlord pretty good set. My name is Todd from Kotu Cards. Hit that subscribe button. Love for you to be a part of the community and I am out of here.